green beans, like a hundred, you know, a couple hundred grams of green beans, and I'd steam the shit out of them, mm -hmm. right? And then I'd put two cans of albacore tuna in there oh, yeah. and mash it all up this with hot disgusting. sauce, right? Yeah. Then I would take like however many grams I had, say 50 grams of those mini barbecue rice cakes. <laughs> and I would just dump them on and texture. I would just mash it all up. Yeah, texture and flavor. And so you had like this crunchy barbecue tuna, like yeah, casserole sort of thing going on. Yeah. And I would, this I was is the guy that. that judges sandwiches. He yeah. judges sandwiches. <laughs> this guy. Disgusting. <laughs> Hey everybody, welcome to It's Just Bodybuilding. Of course, we got Scott McNally, our producer, Dusty Hanshaw, my co-host. How's it going, guys? Like, share, subscribe, comment, and ring the bell. Good job. Good there job. we go. Stay Make sure on. you ring the bell. Make sure you ring one. the bell. That's the best, the best way to totally, yeah, one or three times. Yeah. <laughs> All odd numbers is your only option. <laughs> okay, yes. And remember, of course, we got a lot. We, we just had it. Let's just give them the recap. We had the little Mutant Week here. We got a shout out to Mutant. Thank you for making that live podcast uh, uh, possible by bringing Scott up. Dusty was already coming up to shoot all that content, but they thought, you know what? If you're going to have Dusty up at your gym, why don't we bring Scott up and you guys can do a live show and we'll just have fun with it and you know, it turned out really well. I was happy with how it went. No technical issues. Everyone was on board. Lots of people listening. What'd you think, Scott? It was cool. It was uh it was like a wild four days of heading up there. And usually anytime I've ever made a trip, it's something I'm planning for months and months in advance. And this is like we talked about it on a Monday. We got the tickets and then I left Sunday. So like it was incredible, right. man. That was really cool. And it was cool to see how how everything worked. Like what just just the whole thing, man. I I made a video of it cuz there was just so much to talk about with my personal experience. I just shot, you know, on my phone through the whole thing. And then I put that together and I I sent it over to George cuz I I wanted him to see it first before I put it out. But hopefully oh, right. that'll that'll be coming out right away now. And just it's just like a little. There was like a, a corporate edit or something. Yeah, that to be done. exactly, exactly. <laughs> I just wanted to be safe. You know what I mean? Whoa, and whoa, I, whoa. I'm a guest. I'm that. a guest. You know, so <laughs> yeah. I, I didn't want to overstep anything. And uh, like, can you cut out the scene of like Dana? You know, whipping his thing around. <laughs> yeah. None of that. None of that. Again. Yeah. Again. <laughs> but it, it was cool, man. It was cool to see a look into into like the world of what you guys do in an event like that. Like everybody was awesome too. Like I walked into a house full of people that I, I didn't really, I mean, I knew you guys uh, and I know Jamie, but you know, like the whole group, I didn't really know. And everybody was yeah. like super friendly and having a good time and just really professional too. Like everybody really knew what they were doing. So I, I had a great time just being a fly on the wall for all of that. I feel really grateful that I had that opportunity. Yeah, I, I'm awesome. not really sure. Like, you know, I've been with Mutant for so long and we've done so many shoots and, you know, I don't really know how other people do it anymore. Like, you know, <laughs> I mean, putting everybody in the same house so you have that sort of like, like you know, getting a big Airbnb with all the bedrooms and putting everybody in the house and having everybody cooking together. And it, it, it really does like generate a team, a real team feel. And, yeah, you know, they didn't. They didn't like, you know, Dusty and I said, you know, they could have scheduled us a little harder. You know, they could have worked us harder. Yeah. Um, but but also too, you know, they you know, they um they, they gotta you know, with those types of trips, you gotta have like those you can't pack the day too much because you're gonna be running ten minutes behind on everything. <laughs> you know, like yeah. If you over you know what I mean? Like, you know, if, if you just brought up one athlete or two athletes, you could probably plan to shoot the shit out of them a little bit more. Yeah. But with all those moving parts, you know, I guess, you know, like, because Dusty and I were, you know, Dusty was saying, he's like, yeah, we had quite a bit of free time. Like, you did a lot of shooting. There was two things a day to shoot. But there was plenty mm -hmm. of time to get your meal in, have a little nap, relax, you know. Um, didn't, we weren't overworked, you know, but it was a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah, it's cool. So just yeah. to, like, give everybody a rundown on what I saw, it was like, you know, the, this big, beautiful home where it has enough bedrooms for all the athletes, except for Ron, because we were in town in Vancouver. So yeah. Ron got to sleep at his own house. But you came yeah, over yeah. all the time and hung out. Yeah, yeah. 
And, uh, you know, everybody just wake up in the morning and do their own thing, make their food. Uh, they Mutant took, uh, like, grocery lists from each athlete, and they shopped for all that food. And by the time I – so I was there for, like, four days, and they had shopped at least a couple times while I was there restocking everything. And, and it was just like everybody, you know, get their food together, people doing coaching, you know, on their computers. Me and Jamie were up at, like, 5 a.m. working on our computers and stuff, and then – uh, you know, just everybody packed up in the cars and drove to the gym. And you see multiple shoots happening at once. Dusty is doing this video while Shelby's doing these photographs. And then, you know, there's a team training video over here. And it all kind of happened at the same time and break for lunch and then again in the afternoon and then go out and have some food and stuff. It was it was really cool. Obviously, though, a lot of work, too, for, for everybody, you know, but it's it didn't. It didn't seem like anybody was having like it didn't seem like work for anybody. You know what I mean? It seemed like everybody was having a blast. That was a really fun time. Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm really glad with how it went. And and I mean, what did you think of the gym? I mean, you'd been to West Coast oh, before, yeah. but it'd been a couple of years, so mm. I don't even remember. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right, I guess. I, I, don't, I mean, there's been a lot of changes since you were in before. I don't even I don't remember like you know how long ago you were in or what equipment well, we changed or you knocked out a, a whole wall you knocked out a whole wall uh like behind the stairs like there's a whole other mm-hmm. section now that you're filling up with equipment and there's people training over there people training everywhere else the upstairs was bigger than it was before i saw that as well uh just i mean there was so much more space and more equipment um you just had just it was nonstop, man. You know, you and you had everything split up really nice too. Like out by the window is all that leg equipment. Uh, you had like a bunch of back equipment by itself, chest equipment. Kind of, you could see the method to your your system, and it's always changing right. too, right? Because like that last day came in, you're like, oh yeah, we just had a new piece brought in over here. We're moving these pieces out. I'm selling the the, the you know the the prime you, row and all that. that. You see that one that one piece was on a pallet. Did you see it on the pallet? There? Yes, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, ready to ship. Yeah, there's always something going. Yeah, so coming and going. It was cool okay, to see I'm, how it's developed, man. It's it's definitely yeah. and the energy of the gym too. You know, it's. Uh, the, the, everybody was so excited. Plus, we got to meet listeners that are at the gym. I wish I could have met more. I know there was more in the evening, and I wasn't ever right. there in the evening. So, you know, I, I didn't get a chance. But I will be back. There's no question. If if not with you guys, I'll be heading out there with Victoria at some point. And yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's it's definitely yeah. a destination. You know, if you haven't been oh, yeah. to West Coast Iron, it's like you got to check it out, you know. And I would suggest training at prime time, like 5, 6 p.m. to really see what that energy is like. <laughs> Just to see all the listeners, right? Yeah. Just the listeners. Is that what we're calling them? <laughs> Those ones aren't listening. Um. <laughs> Dusty wasn't listening to what I said. He was busy. He was busy. I, I forgot what I was supposed to be doing there. It was the weirdest thing. No, it's, what are we doing? No. Oh, yeah. I'm a bodybuilder. Oh, right. Yeah. It was really cool, though, because the one thing that's nice is when you go to a gym with experienced members, um, I mean, we're in the way. Yeah. Frankly. Like there's there's three shoots going on all day, five days a week. You know what I yeah. mean? I mean? We break in here and there, but I mean we're talking, you know, no less than eight nine hours of shooting going on in the gym, and the members were you know they were awesome. Like the, you know there was never a point where I was like, you know, when you know you're in the way versus when you feel like you're in the way. I'm like, I never felt like God. We gotta get the fuck out of here. Like we are f-ing these people up, um, yeah. which was great because they were very you know not just the not just your the owners, not you know, but also the members. Because think about it for a lot of people who don't know or don't care. Yeah, you're literally disrupting everything being there. So, you know, uh, it's it's one thing I don't think a lot of people understand when you come into those is how appreciative you need to be to the owners, the staff, and the members. Because hmm. you know, when I'm taking up a corner to do you know uh, shoot new clothing or whatever, it kind of sucks because like, they'll they'll wait and then they'll look at you and you're like go ahead and then they go in and do a set and then they step back out you know um we got uh, we got really lucky except for joe which is an old client of mine he spent hours on one machine i was like bro <laughs> i i gotta say it out loud just to give him shit. i was literally laughing i was like 35 minutes on an incline press i mean i got, he's got big tits i guess it's working what are you gonna do <laughs> there you um, go there you go <laughs> so but it was fun Dusty, and I, i'm glad you got Dusty's to see always got to give somebody a hard time I have to. Well, I did it in person too, but it's better to publicly do it yeah, now that I know that more than three people listen. Um, there you go. But it was cool to get your perspective, Scott, because you do 
it does become something you just do. Like, you know, when Ron and I show up, like, you know, for example, you guys will laugh about this, but when I went uh, for that year away from Mutant, I went to Condemned, um, you know, they were sending me like texts before I flew into town. We're going to do this, we're going to do this. And I kept saying, yeah, okay, yeah, okay. And they had two athletes that were new come in before me and they filmed all of us like one at a time. Yeah. And then like the night before, like well, the night that I landed, he's like, all right, tomorrow we're going to do like a product review and I need like one minute on this or 30 seconds on this. I go, yeah, yeah, no problem. And he was kind of laughing at me because he just watched multiple people fumble through it for two days straight. Oh, you know, yeah. then you hand somebody that's been doing it for 12 years and everything was one take. And he just looked at me and goes, oh, okay. And I'm like, yeah, I, I've been doing this longer than they've been bodybuilding. It's fine, right. you know. Right. So you do right. lose track of how exciting it is. But Scott, you actually made it more exciting for me because just watching you like on the in the airport because you left before me, yeah, like, I got a little more yeah. amped to go. I was like, this is fun. <laughs> I forgot. That's cool, man. <laughs> you guys are both really good at that too, and I I think it is something you can learn. Like I I know that I you know when when I first started podcasting, my ability to communicate is, was different than than it is now. But that said, I right. I do think there's some some natural ability involved there too in the way that you communicate you know and i think you guys both have that it was cool because i got to see that firsthand in you know like I, i've said before i watched mutant on a mission like long before we even knew each other ron like before you knew who yeah. i was you know and yeah. i got to hang out and watch uh the the next mutant on a mission from one of them for this season get filmed at west coast so i actually have some of my footages like behind the scenes where ron's standing there right telling on. dusty he's like okay you know you can open it up how you want you know do what you want i just want to make sure we get around the gym you guys kind of game planned it together and then boom like yeah. one take and you just you just say what you're gonna say you know it's like it you guys have a good a good skill at that and you've spent a lot of time developing it too so i can see how it might look easy but it, it's 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 it was nice it was fun to watch it unfold i guess is what i'm saying i I think one of the main things that you have to do when you're on camera um, is you have to realize, well, we also have the luxury of look who is shooting us. I mean, we had Schmitty Films, yeah. who's awesome. He's cool. And yeah. then we had Nick, Nick and Constantine up from Texas. Those guys so, are great. Yeah. So those guys are all great editors. They make great videos. And so I think a lot of newer people, they they stumble and fumble and they, oh, stop, wait, I'll redo that. Oh, that wasn't good. And they keep breaking their pace to redo. Oh. And re and because they don't realize how good of editors these guys are. Okay, like, yeah. You don't, you don't have to be perfect. You can just flow. You can just like, you can be talking and then you can just go into the next. You can just change topics mid-sentence. That won't be <laughs> in the video. Like yeah. they'll edit around. Like you don't have to be so worried. Just relax and have a conversation. Yeah. And you know, I said some stuff where I was like to Nick, I was like, "Oh, actually, that wasn't accurate. I misspoke there." And he's like, "I'll cut it." Like, yeah. He's like, you know, like don't worry about it. So if you just relax and just let conversation flow and just let them worry about the edit, you don't have to deliver perfect descriptions of everything to them. You know, yeah. you just. Walk around the gym, bullshitting with Dusty, talking about equipment, and I'll just see how it turns out. I mean, you got to hand that stuff off to someone, right? You can't try to micromanage <laughs> that before it's even edited, you know? Yeah, that's so a good. That's, that's a good point. You know, people are scared though of how they're going to be seen or perceived, yeah. or you know, and, and I think that yeah. that holds a lot of people back. Even even people who aren't doing what you're doing. Let, let's just talk about making an Instagram reel or something. You know how many times a guy is trying to teach you how to do like a a, a simple pull down, and he doesn't ever get that video out because he's like, man, I just look stupid. You know what I mean? I, I feel uncomfortable yeah, yeah, doing yeah. that. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it was okay. it was wild, man. I, I asked I asked George about um, how he knew that you would be a good fit for mutant uh, one evening. I didn't get that on video. It would have been a cool little clip to to add in my little vlog. But oh, he yeah. had said uh, that you you just have a way of talking to people. That he met you, you know, you guys talked, and then and then he saw you again later that evening, and and then there was like Kai Green. And then you're just like, hey, hey, Kai, how's it going, man? And you're like, hey, what did you think about uh, how they portrayed you in uh, uh, Generation, Generation Iron? Iron? Yeah. And then he, he answered. And then a little while later, you saw Phil. 
and then you're like, hey, what did you think? And and it's just you you just got them talking about themselves and that you you put people at ease. And and he said because I was wondering like what what did they see in you? To, to get you connected with uh, with with the company because you could have been you know the if you, had that not happened you could have kept doing what you're doing and not been like big round part low that you are today you know what I mean but well, it's it cool to I, see I that have, I have a habit of accidentally interviewing people <laughs> <laughs> it's awkward when it's so, just our waitress I'm like why are we doing this yeah, yeah. Let I'm asking work. her like yeah so how was your summer <laughs> what'd you do you know like. <laughs> It's no, almost it's true. Well, I'm glad the week went well and we got it all done. And the members were awesome. We didn't even like, you know, you're expecting someone to complain. Like, how long are these guys going to be in here? You know, like yeah. you're expecting you're expecting at least one of those. But we had none. But everyone understands like they see, you know, they know that Mutant is a local company, first yeah. of all. So they know that that and they know that Mutant, you know, has like we, you know, they say they help, they're part of the juice bar, like all of our shakes. You know, we primarily make them with Mutant because they, you know, they sponsor the juice bar and they know that I have a relationship with them. And, you know, there's, there's, there's several other brands, like any brand that's on our shelf, we're very courteous to them. Like we let them all shoot at the gym. It's, you know, that sort of thing. Got to have those symbiotic relationships. So, um, you know, it just works out and the members knew what's up. They all know what's up. You know what I mean? They're happy That's to have cool. some action around the gym. And I think a lot of people understand they're like, you know, they're like, oh, well, this is good for the gym and this is my gym. Mm -hmm. yeah. So yeah, there's like a pride to it, for, you know, it's good for the gym I train at, you know, it, you know, it, it's they see it as a positive. So, yeah, it's yeah. awesome. Fun. Yeah. You know, it's all fun. So what are we uh, well, what else are we talking about today? I do have some questions. Oh, cool. I didn't know I, if we're going right into questions or if we mm -hmm. had some YouTube questions you wanted to pull up or if we were just going to dive in. I have a couple of YouTube questions. I, did, I didn't I have a, a topic. I did have a topic, too. I did have oh, a topic. Well, what's your topic? Look at you. Have you guys been on ChatGPT yet? I don't even know what that is. No. Me neither. Okay. It's the, it's the AI, the artificial intelligence that was uploaded to the internet a short time ago. I might have then, yeah. And you can go on it and you can talk to it. And it's not it's not perfect. Obviously, it's an early stage AI. I'm um, I don't know what how early or whatever. I don't know any of that shit. Don't come at me. But what I do know is that it's it's pretty crazy to have some fun with. So it has access to the entire internet, right? It it's it's mm -hmm. an artificial intelligence that can read the entire internet. So it it does get the odd thing wrong, like because you know it just it can't put everything together perfectly. But it is pretty amazing to play around with. So, for example, I uh, I asked it to write a song in the style of ACDC about owning a gym. Yeah, and it just spit out a song. That is so great. Like, and I could literally. As I'm reading the lyrics, and of course, you know, when you read like random lyrics that have no music, it, all lyrics always sound cheesy, right? Yeah. Right. But because because I asked it to do it in the style of ACDC, I was sort of like, I could kind of hear like I was kind of trying to put like some music behind it as I read it. Yeah. Basic, you know, typical 4-4 four, four beat, you know? And I was like, wow, it did a pretty good job. Like, right. you know what I mean? Like it did a pretty good job. It was like, pump it up slam the iron like it was but the lyrics all rhymed <laughs> like 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 the, the the lyrics all rhymed and there was verses and choruses and and it was structured the way an acdc song would be structured you know what i mean yeah yeah like, mm -hmm. and then so i asked it to do one in the style of metallica and it came out it looked very similar verse chorus verse chorus you know bridge outro right. you know yeah. but the lyrics had a different like they were more Metallica, you know yeah. what I mean? It was just funny. Like I'm reading the lyrics and I'm like, these are words that Hetfield would use. Like it was, it was just, it was different. And then I asked it to do one in the style of a rock ballad. So I said, do a rock ballad about owning a gym. And the first line is like standing at the door with my heart in my hand, welcoming the members <laughs> in like, and it just writes you a song. <laughs> and and it was really crazy. And then I asked it, I said, hey, write me a workout in the style of Dwayne the Rock Johnson. And it just spit out a push-pull leg split 
that had a bunch of stuff in it that's clearly like, you know how The Rock loves belt squats and The Rock loves his 20 rep safety bar squats and The Rock loves, you know, certain exercises. They, they were literally had no kidding. Like belt squats were in there. So yeah. it, it, it scoured the internet for everything that The Rock has ever put out regarding workouts. Wow. And it wrote one up. Wow. And and it was actually a pretty good workout too. Like it wasn't dumb. Like it wasn't stupid long. It was actually a workout. I, I looked, I was like, you could give this to somebody and they do okay on it. Like it's, it's a workout. So it's push pull legs. Right. It makes sense. Yeah. Everything's there. And then it even had a little thing at the bottom. Please consult a physician before exercising. Like <laughs> it even threw that in Still there. Still covered its ass. That's wild, <laughs> man. So yeah, I, then, I am familiar with this. I used it to mess. Yeah. I messed around with it as well. Pe YouTubers, we're talking about using it to write their scripts. So I, yes. I punched in like, you know, um, write a script for uh, the costs of doing a bodybuilding contest. And he just had like this whole, you know, if you're considering doing a bodybuilding podcast there's a, or a uh, contest, there's a lot of costs that you may need to consider. And it just Absolutely. like listed them all out. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. And you can, it's it. So people go, oh, well, how is that different from Google? It's 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 completely different because yeah. Google simply gives you links and access to information. This you're having a conversation with this because you can say, like I asked it to write. I was just f thinking of like random stuff, right? I was like, uh, write a punk rock song about driving across Canada. Yeah, and it wrote like these punk rock lyrics, like you know, jumping in the van, cranking the tunes, we're heading out, like. It was like, it wrote a song about driving across the country. And then I said, but it was like long. It had like three verses and, and everything. And I said, make it a lot shorter. That's all I put. Yep. Make, it, make it a lot shorter. And it just whoomph, shrunk it down to two verses and a chorus. It made the, made the a little bit faster. And then I said, add more psychedelic references. <laughs> and it rewrote the song and it put in a line about making sure Punch you got your bong and your mushrooms. <clears throat> Oh my God. Like, it's like, you know, got my baggiest shrooms and my bong in my hand. Wow. You know, and it dri dr getting in the van to drive across the land or whatever. Like, yeah. it rewrites the song with a psychedelic reference in there. And then I asked it to add a reference to Empire Strikes Back. <laughs> of, course, of course you did, first of all. <laughs> and why would you not? Wrote, it rewrote the song. And it mm -hmm. added a line. It added a line about running from a bounty hunter. <laughs> I was blown away. That's wild. I was like, man. of all the references from Empire Strikes Back, it figured that one would be the best one because we're driving across the country. Like, it decided it could have wrote, written a, a reference to any part of that movie, but it picked the bounty hunter part, right? Real it specific. Just, I just thought it was crazy. You can do like this conversational stuff with it, you yeah. know. Yeah, and it, it uh, and so my point is that people are already getting laid off. Apparently, oh There's no already kidding! Companies laying people off because you can say, like, I used to sit at my desk at, at Mutant, and they'd be like, "Hey, Ron, uh, we need some new copy for ISO Surge. We've got a new ad coming out. Okay, Write some. We need like you know." A, you know, a paragraph about this long and then some key phrases for the new ISO search flavors. Yeah. And I'd yeah, sit mm -hmm. there and I'd write stuff up like, you know, are we going to use the word creamy or are we going to use the word tasty? And you have to decide like, which words are we going to use? And you're, you're taking time to write this copy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But you can just go write me a copy on a delicious tasting whey isolate protein. Yeah. And it'll just go boom and you can just copy, paste, yeah. hand it in. Yeah, no, make it shorter, you know, make it longer. Make it shorter, yeah. change one word yourself, edit it yourself, hand it in. You're done yeah. in 10 minutes instead of sitting there for an hour. Yeah. So there's people already, they're like, yeah, we don't really need you anymore. Sorry, bud. Yeah, I could totally see that. That's wild, man. Yeah, I, I had it write one about semaglutide to see, well, what would it say? Write a speech about semaglutide. And it, it popped one out, three paragraphs long. And I said, oh, make that longer. And it popped it out. Now it's five paragraphs long. It's like, wow. And I read through it and I was like, okay, this is all legit. But then there were some things you couldn't do. Like I said, um, semaglutide for bodybuilders. And they said mm -hmm. semaglutide is for you know insulin control. It's for a diabetic medication. Bodybuilders would not benefit from it. 
Right. Went, right. Okay. Okay. There we go. So, so there, I, cause I was looking for, for how to break it basically. You know what I mean? So definitely mm-hmm. there. So there, they have discovered there is definitely some, I don't know if you'd write them as safeties written in or whatever, but there's some bias written in for sure. Yeah. Because of course uh, there is. this one guy, one guy on Instagram, he, uh, he put up a post and it was, what are it was a screenshot of him asking chat gpt what are what are five things white people can improve okay and it and it, and it listed five things it was like white what were people they can take, i want to know <laughs> and, you know one was one was they can acknowledge their privilege more and then the next one is they can share space better or whatever and then he said what are five things asian people can improve and the answer was this is not a fair topic this mm. is not, it's oh. not productive to have conversations about people like this in this way. And then he asked it about Hispanic oh. people and it gave the same answer. And then he asked it about black people and it said the same answer. So it wouldn't list any criticisms of anyone, but it did list criticisms of the white people. Oh, and really? Then, um, yeah. And then, and then uh, I asked it, I wanted to play with it. So I didn't give it an opinion. I just gave it a topic. I said, write a song about mask mandates. Okay. I didn't say I didn't say good or bad, right? Mm-hmm. There's there's just think of all the information on the internet about mask mandates. I figured it would be able to pull something, and it said uh, it's not a good idea to divide people on topics that could result in death or something like that. So mm-hmm. it wouldn't write a song about mask mandates. Maybe I could word okay. my question just right, and I could trigger it to actually. I don't know. But I, but there's certain things that have been written into it for sure. Somebody somebody's got their own little because you know, in my opinion, an artificial intelligence should just literally be giving you straight up facts. Like yeah, yeah like oh, you want I, a song about purple dinosaurs? Okay, here's a song about purple dinosaurs. Like it shouldn't have opinions. Yeah, but right. there's definitely some opinions built into it. So me, it's it's fascinating. We'll let see me ask you this, goes. Dusty. If you were to write something right now, mm-hmm. what like if you were to think of a topic? You would like to have something written about right now because I'm sitting here at Jet Chat GPT. What would it be about? Oh man, any any random talk to me is it would be. Cigars. I would like it to get some cigars. questions. You, now you know what's funny is I, I would go deep in that though because I would like to hear a topic that I didn't know a lot of the answers to. Like you know, for example, I just started that David Goggins recent book. I would love more information on what makes him a super freak because okay. there's, there's a lot of things beyond just what he tells that are there that are out there. I think that I haven't seen. How do you spell Goggins? You do it. G O G O G G I N S. Okay. Oh, a also you can make, you can freak. make like small spelling mistakes and it'll still understand you. Like it doesn't make you correct them. That's great. Cause I'm terrible at spelling. Let's see here. You could say what makes David Goggins such a super freak. Let's see what it says. <laughs> That's what he's doing. Okay. He's doing it right now. It's it's writing right now. David Goggins is often referred to as a super freak due to his extreme physical and mental toughness. He is a retired U.S. Navy SEAL and a former ultra marathon runner known for his incredible endurance and ability to push himself to the limit. He has completed numerous grueling challenges, including running 100 miles in under 24 hours and has a reputation as one of the toughest people on the planet. This, combined with his unorthodox training methods, has earned the nickname Super Freak Dusty. So imagine if your boss... because he says so much. (laughs) <laughs> Imagine if you worked at a at, at somewhere and your boss was like, "Hey, uh, we're we're putting up a thing. We need a thing on David Goggins. Can you write something about, to go with this little article for David Goggins?" Yeah, you just copy and paste that. Yeah. yeah. What if we were to ask it? about us? Like, um... it might not have enough information on us. I asked it about a few people. Like, like tell me about this guy, and it's like, oh, there could be many people with that name. Okay. Well, you know if I, I say. Mean? So, Dusty Hanshaw. But that's just because I'm not famous enough, maybe. Don't, right don't about write Dusty the Hanshaw, the there. bodybuilder. Let's see what he has yeah, to say. Yeah, see what he says. No, no. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't have enough information on a bodybuilder named Dusty Hanshaw. How about uh, do yeah. uh, Dusty Hanshaw the whore? 
and see. Okay, hold on. No, no, no. Oh wait, it's too long. I can't There's read so it much all here. <laughs> so, so much I, data. I, I, so much data. So I I asked it to write a 300 word essay describing Dorian Yates' training style. Okay. Yeah. And it wrote this 300 word essay that explained how Dorian trained, and it was really accurate. And then I said, "Make it 500 words." That's all I put. Make yeah. it 500 words. <laughs> I didn't rephrase the question. I said, make it 500 words. And it just rewrote it with like extra paragraphs and it was longer. Yep. It's crazy. Yeah, I asked you and to I do something about hit training yeah. as well. <laughs> I, I could have just printed that and handed it in as an assignment or something. If I was in college and I was writing out, writing an essay about something, I just fucking do that. What done. is that going to do to us? You know, our, our society. Well, it's going to make my kids already, slay in school. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're already talking about how teachers, there's there's all sorts of teachers now that are like, I don't know who's right and what. I yeah. don't know what's actually being done. I can't tell. Wow. You know, and there's no plagiarism because it'll be a different, you know, you could have so, 100 people ask that. And it learns too. So it it actually changes. So like if you come back six months later and ask it the same question again, it might give you a different answer because it's yeah. learning as it goes. It's crazy. What what if you, a new what if the three of us soon. wrote the same question right now and hit enter? Would we all get a different variation? Yes. yes. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe. Yeah, because I've Maybe. asked it the same question multiple times and it pops something out differently. Ooh, right. I do have yeah. to throw in. So I know, guys, we usually go a little bit longer than this. Ron had some tech issues and we have... Uh, another show with an, an interview that we're doing next. We only have like 15 minutes. Should we switch topics? Maybe jump into some stuff? Yeah, yeah. I got... I got we did a whole uh, show on that just now. Uh, yeah, we sure did. <laughs> if... Um, okay. Do, 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 do. Nobody had anything, just me? I got some stuff here. Why don't we start with this one while you look? I have a bunch. There, are, a lot of them are for my my Instagram, but I can find. There's three here that would be good. Okay, okay. Let's go. Jim McDonald. He says uh, oh. the answer to my question really got me thinking. Thanks, guys. He says question for the next episode. Uh, uh, what's the grossest food you have eaten for bodybuilding? For example, have you blended meat into a drink, or have you eaten old food? So, at the time, it was delicious. But now going, I couldn't eat it again. I was just so dieted that it was good. You know what I mean? When you get really dieted and something tastes good. And then afterwards, like you're like, whoa, that was. Yeah. So I would take green beans, like a hundred, you know, a couple hundred grams of green beans. And I'd steam the shit out of them. Mm -hmm. Right. And then I'd put two cans of albacore tuna in there oh, yeah. and mash it all up this with hot disgusting. sauce. Right. Yep. Then I would take like however many grams I had, say 50 grams, 60 grams, 70 grams of those mini barbecue rice cakes. <laughs> and I would just dump them on and texture. I would just mash it all up. Yeah, texture and flavor. And so you had like this crunchy barbecue tuna, like yeah, casserole sort of thing going on. Yeah. And I would, this I was is the guy that. that judges sandwiches. He yeah. judges sandwiches. <laughs> this guy. Disgusting. <laughs> It's disgusting. I'm hanging up with abhorrent behavior. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Think about that for a minute. Think about what you just heard. All right. So, so Ron, what would you call this? If, was in a, of, if you were in yeah. a if you were in a restaurant, what would the what would that meal be called? Because I know you don't like anything sneaking up on you. It would be the barbecue tuna crunch. <laughs> <laughs> that just sounds terrible. It, it's good. <laughs> because he, he didn't. Yeah, it's like well, maybe, but so you didn't. You weren't there for this, Scott. But what bothers Ron? I'm going to make him explain this. Ron, what bothers you about reading what something is? You don't want any surprises. What does that mean? I don't want surprises. So I don't want you to say, um. Like, for example, steak and fries. Hey, what can I get for you? I'll have a steak and fries. Sounds good. And then the plate comes and maybe you got steak with a giant glob of garlic butter melting oh. all over it. And then you got salad with like salad dressing that's been poured all over it and it's kind of running into your fries. Yeah. 
then I'm, I'm like, okay, right away, I have a whole bunch of problems. Yeah. Like, this is not what I ordered. I know you think you're giving me a delicious meal, but you, I said steak and fries, and you said gotcha. And now <laughs> I got a plate full of fucking goop that I have to deal with. <laughs> so this makes me I don't, so happy. I yeah. just, I don't like, I want you to name the meal. You say, yeah, it's the steak, fries, salad, and butter. Do you want the steak, fries, salad, and butter? Nope. Right? No, it's just, just the steak and fries. Yeah. Yeah. I that didn't know sense. about, you know, I've had some, I just don't like surprises, you know. You, you get, you know, and, and, and restaurants do funny things. Restaurants do things to try to stand out and be different, right? Yeah. They're like, oh, everyone does steak and fries, but we're going to put this awesome, giant, like inch square cube of garlic butter, butter. extremely yeah. <laughs> strong garlic butter on top of the steak, which just looks cool for a photo. Yeah. And then yeah. in about a minute, it's just running all over the plate. And now your fries are like soaked in garlic butter. And you're like, oh, fuck. I don't even like garlic butter. Like, yeah. That doesn't count. You didn't this. finish it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm picky. Yeah. That's a problem. How about you, Dusty? You got anything? You know what? I, I don't have anything like that because I never had a hard time putting my food down. Like, I didn't need to make some big thing. But I will say, I think everyone has done this where you I – was, I went to the USA's the first time with Chris, and he didn't know what we were going to eat. So I literally made enough chicken, enough fish, and enough steak to cover every single meal for three days. Oh, yeah. So – You got a lot of food. Literally. <clears throat> so I bring all that food, and I said – Whatever I don't eat, I'll eat after the show. Mm. And I meant it. Like, I'm not going to waste any food. Yeah. Well, we ended up literally eating steak pretty much every meal. So I had all this fish and all this chicken left. And the Monday or Tuesday after the show, I went back home and I packed up my fish and my, ch- you know, my rice and went to, went to the office and I'm working. Oh, time to eat. I took one bite. I was like, yeah, I was eating this garbage. I mean, as soon as you eat normal food for yeah. two days, as as it's over. You realize that what you were eating that was so delicious, you were just starving. Yeah, fish. And starving. this is fish now that has traveled in a cooler, several states, has been in a hotel room for several days, and has been traveled back home. You know, eh, that's questionable. Exa- that's that that all on its own. So literally, you get you start eating, and you're like. Okay, throw all this away. Send an employee to go get me lunch. This is a mess. Yeah, but yeah. I, yeah you can't it, there's a that. lot of little recipes and things, just basic, not even like psychotic, like Sandwich Man here, and <laughs> like you can't eat them after yeah. the fact. So Oreos are still Oreos, is all I'm gonna say. But yeah, that was. I have good. a weird one. It's not really gross, but it's weird, and I don't we'll see, see people it. doing this. So <laughs> when I lived in Mexico. They were there. There was three seasons of avocados, so they had three every. No matter what, what time of year it was, like there was always avocados in season. And um, the place where I worked, we would get this lunch buffet, and they would set out a half of avocado peeled, with the pit taken out, and a scoop of tuna fish plopped into it. And I was like, "Huh, okay." So I grabbed a couple. I grabbed one the first time, and it's like really creamy avocado, you know. So I cut a piece and. It was like really good. So when I started dieting and bodybuilding and I had fat, I started using that instead of mayo to mix my tuna fish. So I'd I'd eat fish and I would mix the avocado and just like blend it in and use that in place to like turn it into like a tuna salad. It was actually really good. Put a little salt on that. Not bad at all. Huh. But I didn't have Mexico. I did. Yeah, Yeah. For a little while. Yeah. Yeah. When did you live in Mexico? What am I missing? I stopped here? listening oh. right there and just <laughs> like two thousand and waited for two thousand and three. I lived in Mexico for a while when I worked did in photography. No, when I worked in photography, oh. uh, we went down there for a while to work on some projects with uh, the Santa Fe Photo Workshops and National Geographic. It was pretty cool. No way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I things I know about Scott that I didn't know. Yeah, I, I there's some of those stories I've never really told on the show before uh, Who knew I, those? I, I i'll tell you guys some of that stuff sometimes it was in this little town called san miguel de liente uh, jack kerouac lived there for a while when he wrote the book on the road he talked about no going to a bar there called uh uh la cucaracha the cockroach bar and there were fights there Perfect for dusty there were fights there every night 
on the weekend. And the weekend was Wednesday go? through Sunday. Because the farmers would work like Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday. And after that, they'd come into town for the next few days. And literally, they'd be in that bar drinking until the sun came up. They didn't like close at 2 a.m. or anything like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And there was a fight there every night. It was a long, narrow building. And they would you know, start midway back. And literally, that fight would roll out the front doors every, every single night. And I'd been there for one of them. I don't wild. want to fight a farmer. In like Mexico, in drink, you know? yeah, yeah, for like eight. Like, I don't know. No, no, no. Well, for me, I don't want to fight. I don't want to fight. I don't want to fight locals in a sketchy police state. Like, yeah, yeah. Like you know, the police show up and the locals know them by name, and you're like the man out. Yeah, oh. yeah. The locals are what like, "Hey, here? Bob." Not what he says. <laughs> yeah, I think it's Jose. Yeah. But yeah. Um, yeah. Let's keep the racism out of it. <laughs> ah, I just expect that. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. Like said, well, Bob. for accuracy, the farmer is more likely to be named Jose than Bob. So you're just being accurate. Yeah. yeah there you fair, go. Fair, fair. <laughs> okay. You got one, okay. uh, Ron? Yeah. If you could press the big red button and delete social media, would you and why? Would that include the podcast? Exactly. What social media? I consider this social media. It's on YouTube. I wouldn't delete it at all. I'd be broke. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, I'd destroy my life and my businesses. Yeah. Literally. I I love when people get on this rant about social media. It's like, it's exactly what you said, Ron, or I mean, Scott, last week about bodybuilding. Social media did not do this to you. Mm. You did it. It's just like you said about bodybuilding. Like, there are so many things now. You have changed my entire life, Scott, Scott with that line. It's, it's amazing. So There's nothing like social media is not bad. Stop following assholes. There you yeah. go. Handled. Yeah. Someone's talking trash. Ignore them. Maybe don't screenshot their comment and put it in a story and whine about it. Yeah. Like, yeah, I would never. Just disengage. Social media is the greatest just- thing that happened to us. <laughs> disengage if, uh, here's my advice if there's anything that comes through your feed that makes your anxiety go up anything hmm. like someone you someone that kind of irritates you with the way they present themselves or someone who's kind of like maybe there's someone you know so you follow them and they follow you back but their posts always make you go oh this fucking guy right yeah. um a key phrase <laughs> um but it, it, if, if there's anyone like that, just either if you don't want to unfollow them because you don't want to like, you know, you see them at the gym every day or you see them at work or whatever, you just mute them. Mm. You can just yep. mute them so you never see their stuff. I have so much muted on my Instagram. It's mind boggling. I mute everything that irritates me. If it even slightly irritates me, I just mute that person forever because I'm I'm over it. I'm not taking part in this. Eh, eh, this I don't want any of that. Like that's what gets people. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's it's true. Like what what do you think, Scott? I mean, obviously, our entire business, the three of us here, would all be homeless if there wasn't for social. Oh media, yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We could like do OnlyFans, but OnlyFans wouldn't exist. So there's that. See, you know? can we do that? <laughs> really killing my house. <laughs> So I know I'm with you guys 100%. And I I uh I like the line Dusty because it is true man. You know, we we can we and, yeah, we engage with what we want, you know. So if you if you it is I know people who are like, "Oh, I got to stay off of social media because I get all involved in the politics and I get arguing with people." Like Facebook, for some reason it's Facebook that people are like I got to stay off of that, you know, because that's where all the arguments take place and you know, just whatever, yeah. you know. Let people do their yep. own thing and just do your own thing. You know, we have people that, you know, they want to, they come to the Facebook group for Think Big and they want to start trouble. And I'm like, okay, listen, you know, maybe you don't belong here, but I don't have to say that because everybody else does. And then they leave, you know, they, <laughs> they yeah. figure it out, you know, pretty quick. Mm-hmm. Same with, same with our comments. You know, it's like, if you're going to be a jerk about it, it's like, well, we don't have to listen to you, you know, go. And that's it. Yeah. You yeah. can trash me. I think it's yeah. funny. Um, <laughs> Yeah, don't be I have afraid. no feelings don't when people afraid. get weird. Don't be afraid to <laughs> mute the hell out of your feed. Just mute everyone that irritates you. You yeah. know what I mean? Just mute everything that makes your blood pressure go up or, you know. And it's I, serving I, you. I, 
I have a couple of friends that every time I talk to them, I'm like, hey, how's it going? And the first thing they say is like, oh, man, you know, the government doing this and this and this. And I'm like, okay, fair enough. But the fact that that's the first thing you brought up when I asked how you were doing mm. means you're like, you're just way too focused on stuff. You don't have, you shouldn't be thinking about this. Like, don't you have a, you own a business. Mm. Like you have right. a family. I know you have kids. <laughs> So why is the first thing you said when I asked how's it going? Just saw oh, the government doing this, and I heard they're going to do this, and I heard they're going to do that. It's like, man, there's there's certain amount of things I just got to disengage from. Like when Gary Vee says, like yeah, when we got, we got Terrence when, okay in the green room when what when when Gary Vee says room. like we have quit complaining room. about the rules, you know, quit complaining about the rules of the game and just win at the game. So yeah. that's my take. Okay, we got Terrence. We're going to wrap this one. Yes. Remember, everybody, like, share, subscribe, <laughs> ooh, comment. Ooh. And now Dusty's got to mute for his. Ring the bell. He's muted. He's yeah. muting the ring the bell. That's okay. And ring, He's the, bell. Muting the, ring the bell. There you go. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> <laughs> and remember, I am mutant.com, Big Ron 20, Dusty 20, 20% 20 off for you. Hit up the website, order your stuff. These new beanies and t-shirts are going to be on there soon. So there's lots. Uh, and the new up hoodie to Scott's five wearing. 5X yes. on the shirts. Yeah, yes. up to 5X on the shirts. They're going big time on the shirts. So And go, I want to add, too, thank you guys so much for having me out. That was just an incredible thing. And I, I, I can't even, I don't have the words. So I'll, I'll leave it at that, and we'll say thank you. Awesome. Thanks, everybody. And remember, it's just bodybuilding.